The operator of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says the reactor cooling system is now fully recycling contaminated water. The operation started a week ago but was twice halted because of leaks. A water decontamination device in the system also had to be shut down due to human error. Water recycling resumed on Saturday evening after being suspended while the plant's operator installed stronger piping to prevent leaks. TEPCO said the system no longer requires fresh water input and no contaminated water is being released. And simply dump the ramens into the colander and shake it all about. Previously, the system required two to three tons of fresh water per hour. TEPCO cited a lack of preparation due to the speed of installing the system, which consists of Japanese and foreign devices. The utility has set the target of July 17th to complete the first stage of its plan to bring the facility under control. For the second day in a row, a robot has been sent into one of the damaged reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It checked radiation levels after another robot on Friday removed radioactive contaminated dust and rubble from the number three reactor building. Tokyo Electric Power Company sent in the first US-made robot on Friday. It is trying to decontaminate the site before it injects nitrogen into the containment vessels to prevent another hydrogen explosion. TEPCO has already injected nitrogen gas into the containment vessels of the number one and number two reactors. It hopes to complete the nitrogen injection into the number three reactor by July 17th. However, radiation levels in the number three reactor remain high and a site has to be decontaminated before workers can safely enter the building. Alrighty then. The company sent in a robot on Saturday to check radiation levels. Officials say the levels were lower than before the cleaning. TEPCO is studying data obtained by the robot. A government survey in Japan has found higher levels of radiation on fields and forests and on asphalt pavements in towns about 10 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The Cabinet Office and the Ministry of Science monitored radiation for more than 10 days from June 13th at 400 locations in towns which fall within the 20-kilometer no-entry zone. In Tomioka town, about 10 kilometers from the plant, the highest level was detected on an unpaved road two kilometers northwest of Tomioka Station. The reading at one centimeter above ground level was 39.1 microsieverts per hour. In Namiya town, about eight kilometers from the plant, 25.4 microsieverts was detected at one centimeter above ground level in a forest about one kilometer west of Namiya Station. Readings were generally lower on roads and parking lots covered by asphalt and higher on fields and forests. Radioactive substances are believed to be easily washed away by rain on asphalt but adhere to soil and plants. The government plans to monitor radiation at more than 3,400 locations in no entry and evacuation advisory zones by the end of August. Measurements will be taken at gardens of private homes and roof gutters where radiation tends to be high, as well as roadside ditches. Japanese automakers have started implementing weekend shifts at their factories to cope with expected power shortages this summer. Workers at Nissan Motor Company began arriving at the Yokosuka factory near Tokyo at around 4 a.m. on Saturday. The company has two shifts starting from 5.30 a.m. until 2 p.m. and from 5 p.m. until 1.30 a.m. Nissan plans to monitor the use of power and to shut down air conditioners if overuse is detected. We will try our best to achieve restoring production that dropped after the disaster while saving energy at the same time. Some 800,000 workers at automakers and their parts suppliers across the country are now working on weekends when power demand is lower. 
The automakers will close their factories on Thursday and Friday until the end of September. The change in work days is expected to have an effect on the employees' relationships with their families and communities. Now being home, when my kids are off school, is tough. Changing my routine is hard, but I don't have a choice. It wouldn't take much or to throw us right back into barbaric times. All you'd have to do would be eliminate electricity. That's all. But, but completely.